Good evening. It is Friday, December 18th at 7 o'clock, and this is 7 at 7. For those of you joining us live, I really appreciate it. And those of you who will join us later, I hope, to, hope you get something out of this as well. Um, this week, Pastor John delivered his second message on, in the sermon series, Hope Arrives. This week, the name of it was Hope For You. So if you haven't had a chance to look at it, or to, to join. If you didn't get a chance to join us on Sunday and didn't get a chance to view it this week, I really encourage you to. If you scroll down on the Facebook feed, uh, you should be able to find it. Um, also, there is the handout should also be on the Facebook feed. If not, you can get on the website, Hope City. Uh, you just Google Hope City in Evansville. It should be able to pull it up for you. Um, but, but this week, Hope For You, I thought was a really great message building off of last week. Um, you know, our mission as Hope City Church is to share the goodness of God to bring hope and transformation in Christ. And our goal as a church is to do that with our city, with our community, and with you or with me. Um, so uh, regular attendance for me really helps me to, you know, say refresh. And even if I'm not attending in person, viewing it online is really good. Um, so this week, Hope For You kind of built off of last week. Um, I know one of the focuses last week was on what hope is. And I mentioned this last week in uh, my seven at seven, and I know it was mentioned in a couple other seven at sevens, um, that hope is a, a positive imagination of what, what God says about you in his word. Um, uh, the Greek word for hope, el peace, which originates from the word el po, is uh, to anticipate or expect, usually with pleasure. So, you know, hope, that hope that God's goodness brings is uh, a positive expectation for his goodness and, and for, uh, walking in his blessing, which I think is a super awesome and powerful, um, thing to, to dwell upon. Um, one of the first things that pastor John brought up, uh, this past week, uh, if you told you how to get a chance to check it out, really encourage it is, is actually a quote from Billy Graham. Um, the quote, I'll read it to you now is Christ not only died for all, he died for each, which is something that for me, I have to be intentionally cognizant of and aware of and remind myself of, um, you know, because there are oftentimes opportunities to get into frustration. Um, the person that cuts you off in traffic, uh, the person that's taking forever in the shopping, in, in the checkout line in front of you, uh, the person that won't stop talking when you're trying to get work done, you know, all these opportunities that we come across in daily life, we can sometimes get frustrated or, 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 or lash out, but Christ died for those people just as much as he died for us, you know, because he died for each, not only for all. And that's something that's really powerful that I thought really, it stuck with me for sure. I had never heard it explained that way. I knew it to be true, but, but hearing it in that way was so awesome. Um, and that's one of the great things about Jesus is, you know, even when you feel like you missed it, he treats you like you made it. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, verse or scriptures that Pastor John brought up this week uh, was uh, in John chapter 8, verses 3 through 12. And I'm not going to read it. I'll just explain it more. Um, but I don't like reading off of a screen. I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me read either. But basically, it was talking about um, the, the instance in which a woman was caught in adultery. And the lawmakers and the Pharisees and the Sadducees brought her before Jesus, who was minding his own business. Uh, and they, they, they brought her before him and they threw, him, threw her on the ground and said, what would you have us do with her? Uh, because, you know, Old Testament law, according to Moses, those caught in adultery were to be stoned. And what I love about this, this part is Jesus answered them with the same, um, the same rule, the same line of thought. That he, he answered them with the same judgment that they were using upon her. Um, he said that it, uh, elsewhere in the Bible, Jesus says that he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. So he didn't break any of the law. He came to fulfill it for us because we were unable to. Because the law made us focus on the sin and not who we are in Christ and who we are originally created to be. It talks about in, the old, in, in Genesis how God created us in his image. So his intention for us was always to be one with him and, and able to have communion with him consistently. And that's what Jesus came to redeem us. But what he answers them is... Uh, he who is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her, which I love because he wasn't saying that she was not in the wrong. He didn't even bring attention to that. What he did instead was bring attention to the fact that, yes, that is what the law says, but none of you are, are just to judge her either because none of you are perfect. And, you know, he was the only one in that situation who was allowed to condemn her or to, 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 to had the justification to judge her, but he didn't. 
And what I love that Pastor John explained really well in depth is in this situation, when they first brought her up to Jesus, he stood up and, and the way Pastor John explained it, and I really, I really valued how he described it, and I kind of viewed it the same way, is um, nothing but love in his eyes as he looked at her and walked right past her. And it brought the attention off of her, off of the sin, off of the issue at hand, and onto him, which is an amazing foreshadowing for what he ultimately did for us on the cross. He brought attention away from our sinful behavior and our, our identity as sinners and took it all on himself, took the attention off of us onto him and kept, he started writing on the ground and brought it away. Um, and so Jesus took the sinning and changed it from an action to a belief for us. He, or a wrong belief actually, um, of who you are. Um, action is a result of belief. That's actually one of the, the bullet points that Pastor John brought up on on uh, Sunday is, you know, we are not sinners because if we've accepted Christ, he's redeemed us from that. We've been made new creatures in Christ. So we have the capacity and the opportunity to live our, our lives outside of sin because we've been empowered through Christ to live sin-free lives. Now, of course, we're probably all going to make at least one more mistake after we become Christians. That's just the world we live in. But we have the op opportunity to live our lives outside of it. And that's what he empowered us to do. And one of the really important things to, to be aware of about that is, you know, what you behold is what you become. In uh, Romans 12, 2, it talks about do not be tr transformed or do not be conformed uh, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? So what you focus on and what you set your mind on, that is how you behave and how you act. Um, so one of the really important things is to see your value based on the price paid for you. You know, when you go to a store and you see a brand new TV, it's not offered for $10, right? Because it's worth more than that. But so often we view ourselves as worth nothing because, oh, I screwed up today or I screwed up yesterday or I yelled at my my sibling or, you know, I did this, 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 or this. But, but that's not how God views us. God views us as the most valuable thing in all of heaven and earth because he paid the ultimate price. He stepped out of his divinity into humanity to take on sin for us so that we could be with him. He died for each. And that is just so powerful. Um, but one thing that I want to leave you with, you know, it talks about what you behold is what you become. Well, what are you beholding? Right? We got to look in the word to see who we are called to be as Christians. And if you read the gospels, we can behold who Christ was. But after that, it's who we are as the church. So I'm going to leave you with this. It's uh, Philippians 4 verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And I think it's an awesome way to view if, you know, don't focus on the bad because we have tons of opportunities to focus on the bad around us, but focus on the good that Jesus brought us to repentance and brought us hope through his goodness. Hey, I'm doing a seven to seven. Can you? <laughs> so again, if you guys need any prayer, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we'd love to, to pray with you and connect with you. Look forward to seeing you this Sunday uh, on our Christmas service. If we don't see you uh, this week, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and stay blessed. Thanks.